Hey guys, how's it going? It's Mike. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys what I use to draw. So I'm going to be showing you guys my supplies and my materials. So the first thing that I get asked a lot about is about the pencil that I use. And I use this um, Uni Alpha Gel. Um, you can get this on at jetpens.com. It has this kind of squishy uh, gel um, for grip and I find that it's very comfortable you know it's a lot more thicker than a normal pencil and I don't know I find it very comfortable and the cool thing about this mechanical mechanical pencil is that you don't have to click it to get new lead out all you have to do is flick it so um, I don't know if you can see it but there's no lead so all I'm gonna do is flick it like that and you see there's lead um, so <laughs> I don't know if that matters to you if you save time you know a click versus flicking but I think it's kind of neat you don't have to take your grip off of your pencil you can just flick it and get back to drawing and I also get asked a lot about this eraser and it's an eraser called a kneaded eraser and you buy it it comes in like a cube and you just to clean it you just go like this, you pull it apart, and I don't know, it just spreads out the lead that it just erased. And this will last you a very long time. And what I like about it is that it doesn't smear the drawing. So I'm just going to draw this little squiggly. And you just press really light, and it doesn't really smear the drawing. Wow, this is like an infomercial. I need an eraser. So this is a kneaded eraser, and you can find it at most uh, art supply stores, usually, like a Michael's or a Joann's here in the States. And I'll, I'll be sure to, um, in the description, I'll leave links to the various places where you can find um, all these supplies. Okay, so mechanical pencil, rocking the pink, kneaded eraser, and, oh, I forgot to mention that for this pencil, I use uh, 0.5 lead. So I buy it in these little Pentel containers. And I have HB and I have B. And HB is sort of like the mid-range. You can go softer lead that is also darker. Or you can go harder lead that is lighter. And I tend to like softer lead, so I have this B. Um, so you can try different types of lead and see which ones you like. And for me, I like to press really lightly uh, when I sketch, so a softer lead allows me to do that. Okay, so that's the lead I use. And I also have these colored lead. So maybe not in my recent videos, but maybe videos maybe like um, half a year ago or so, I used to use a blue pencil to do my rough drawing. Instead of that, you can also use blue lead or pink lead, <laughs> whichever color you prefer, and put it in this pencil and sketch uh, with that and then you can either ink on top of that or do your final line or do that eraser technique um, that ghost technique that some of you know about from watching my videos so these are the leads that I use just regular drawing lead and colored lead sometimes but not usually and let's see for a long time um, just when I'm sketching in my sketchbooks or just um, trying to design things, concepts, and things like that. I'll use different kinds of pens if I'm not using my pencil. I really don't have a preference for these kinds of pens. Sometimes I'll use a ballpoint or a Sharpies. This is a big one. This is a thin one. And for me, I just want a pen that has good flow. Again, you know, I want to press light with my drawing, and so it's very loose and very fluid to draw, so I tend to use uh, ballpoint pens that have good flow to it or these sharpies um, flow pretty good and recently um, as I'm working on my manga story and getting ready to actually create it I've got these um, G pens and you know different kinds of uh, nibs there are, I, I guess there are like three different types of uh, tips that people normally use and, and one is the G pen and let me see if I can find it. 
This I actually got at a local Japanese store, but um, I'll try to leave a link for um, sites online that you can actually buy these. So this is the G-Pen, and they're used mainly for uh, shonen manga because the line, um, I guess they say it's more energetic, you know, thick and thin. It's good for uh, boys manga, so G-Pen. And there's also, this is a Maru Pen. So like a, I think it has a round tip. I could be mistaken. No, Saiji is the round tip, this one. And this one is just like a smaller tip, Maru. So these three um, that I'm still getting used to, but um, I bought them recently just so that I could practice with them. And for ink, I got this ink. This goes with the different nibs that I just showed you. This is uh, the leader. The number four is, um, I think it's good for, I mean, it doesn't smudge when you erase it. But I don't really use this anymore. I use this ink, um, Pilot ink. I've seen a lot of artists use this, and I think I like it better than the deleter, although I can't really say why. It just uh, flows better. And this is the box for drawing use, Pilot. I also got this um, brush pen. So when I'm filling in a lot of darks, I don't want to use a pen like this and try to color in these big spaces of black because it'll take me, I don't know, a really long time to do that. So this has ink in here and it's just like a brush that never dries up. So, you know, you can fill in like a lot of area with a brush like that. And I can show you guys um, a drawing that I did using this brush pen and my G pens. So this is a drawing that I did last night and um, this character on the right is just, um, he's not, I just made him up uh, just to practice. And so the, the ink lines, I've used my G pen and this area I've used that brush pen that I just showed you and also for the hair. So you can see that coloring in, you know, these areas of black, it's really easy. So I use that. And today I actually bought this empty brush pen because I want to add um, ink and water into this so that I can do a gray tone. So not just black, but maybe I can do some, um, maybe some watercolor effects or s different tones of shading um, by mixing ink with water and keeping it in this pen. I don't know if you guys know the creator of Slam Dunk and Vagabond, um, Takehiko Inoue, and he uses uh, Sumi brush brushes uh, for his manga. So he doesn't even use um, those pen nibs that most manga artists use. He uses a brush and he can, he can create very loose, very expressive uh, lines that I thought would be interesting to experiment with. So today I bought uh, some of these brushes to experiment with. So that pretty much covers what I use to draw, what I use to ink and erase. And now I want to talk about uh, the different kinds of paper that I use. Or this past month, I've been using uh, the leader paper. But prior to that, I've just been using like Canson paper that you can get again at probably your local uh, art store. For me, I just find paper that, I mean, it's just kind of basic paper. Nothing, nothing special or fancy or anything. But recently, I have been practicing with the leader paper. This drawing that I just showed you, this guy with all the sketches, I have used Deleter comic book paper that you can find online. And this one is, I guess, ruler A, type 110B4. And I'm not actually sure what B4 stands for, but the 110 I know stands for the thickness of the paper, like 110 pound. I mean, it doesn't weigh 110, 110 pounds, but when you're talking about thickness of paper, they use pounds for some reason. And so there's 110 and there's 135. And what I've noticed for this um, drawing is that for the ink that I did here on the pants with the brush pen, that this paper is maybe a bit too thin because it would buckle. It would start to warp a little bit. So today I got another type of paper, and this is Deleter C. So this one is, you can see here, it's 135. So I'm going to be experimenting with this later. And I think 
it'll hold the ink better because it's it'll be a lot thicker than the uh, 110 paper. Um, prior to that, I got uh, <laughs> this little small one. Um, I think a lot of indie manga artists in Japan use um, this size. This is uh, 135, so it's thick, but it's smaller, so you don't have to draw as big. But uh, when I do my stories, I think I want to go with the big paper. And also, besides the paper, I want to show you guys the different kinds of sketchbooks that I use. Here are the different kinds of sketchbooks, and I guess with sketchbooks, uh, for me, I like to have, uh, let me zoom out a little bit, zoom. I like to have different sizes of sketchbooks. And the reason for this is, I think it's always a good idea to have a sketchbook with you. So when I'm traveling, I'll have a sketchbook like this. It fits in your pocket, really easy. And, you know, when my wife and I uh, go out, we'll see like a stationary store. We'll look for uh, different kinds of sketchbooks. So this one is more like a landscape one that I haven't used yet. Um, and when I went to Canada recently, I took this one. Um, it's a little big to fit in your pocket, but um, it's big enough to do some sketches. So, you know, I'd visit the different um, islands or different places like Quebec or Magdalen Islands and I'll do sketches to um, just take some notes of what I see then maybe it'll give me some ideas for future stories so we went to a, a pub I saw a teenager with like a like an Ahab sailor beard um, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny so I made a little note of that lobster traps behind the homes and just little details that I see um, uh, when I sketch in my sketchbooks and that's pretty much why um, I try to take sketchbooks uh, with me wherever I go because you never know when either you're gonna be bored and you're just gonna want to draw that you'll see something that'll be interesting to you that you could use later in your stories or your characters and also you never know when you'll get an idea I mean it might pop up when you're standing in line waiting for your food or when you're on the train or when you're in between classes or in class. So it's always good to have a sketchbook. And I also have bigger sketchbooks like this one. This is a little smaller than 8.5 by 11. Um, you can see that uh, before when I was working on my soccer um, idea, I would just do different designs of stuff. This is like fighting poses. This is the my notes for the video I did on different body proportions. So sketchbooks are really good um, because it allows you to figure stuff out. I mean, uh, when I first started uh, in college or even before college, I would get sketchbooks and maybe you're like me, but you would, I would only draw maybe 10 pages and then I wouldn't want to draw on the sketchbook anymore because the drawings look so bad. And in my mind, I thought that, you know, I'd want my sketchbook all the pages to be awesome, right? So like later in life, I can look back and say, man, look at all these pages and all my sketches are so awesome. <laughs> but um, as I got older, I realized that that's not the point of a sketchbook. The point of a sketchbook, I mean, it is to have really beautiful drawings, but it's really a place for you as an artist to, um, to get better and to experiment with ideas to where you should feel free and safe to make mistakes. So this is an, an idea I had for a fishing comic and you know just different stuff like this is where I tried to figure out um, how I was gonna show the video I did on how to draw backgrounds and so I try different ideas and maybe some you know it doesn't look good but then eventually you you figure out what doesn't work and what you like and what you want to put into stuff and then you you find something that you can, you know, um, I guess you can find a design that you like in the end. So different fighting poses, you know, I'd study fashion, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, with sketchbooks, it's really about um, just not being afraid to make mistakes. And, you know, sketchbooks, it's really just for you. No one else is supposed to look at it. And you don't have to show anybody. It's really, I feel, where you can develop yourself as an artist and you can study, you can write your ideas, treat it like a journal. What's in this one? See, it's like, I don't even want to show you, it's embarrassing. <laughs> this is 
This is the one on how to draw characters in perspective, um, placing different characters um, in a scene and different horizon, um, I guess, heights. So I try to figure out, OK, what's the best way that I can convey this information? And so I try different things, you know, different compositions, and um, try to write out um, how I'm going to explain it. So yeah, the sketchbook just has all kinds of stuff. All right, so different size sketchbooks. Um, the bigger ones I usually keep at home or when I'm at maybe a relative's house or I'm not going to go anywhere. And smaller ones I'll take on the road um, where I can easily fit it in my pocket, just take a pen. And yep, that's about it, guys. So that's my materials. That's what I use to draw. And that's kind of where I'm at, what I'm working on. So. Uh, next, I'll be, I guess, practicing more with um, inking and just, um, I guess, recently I've been trying to find uh, my particular style. Um, I guess I, I feel like I don't really draw in a way that I like, so I'm trying to um, just keep keep experimenting and keep trying different things and try to find a style that I feel like um, I'm comfortable with and that I like and that I could use in one of my stories. So. Um, again, I'm going to leave a link to all the materials that I showed you in this video and where you can find them online. And yep, that's about it for this video on supplies and materials. So have a great week, guys, and I'll see you guys soon.